Shall we start? Hare Krishna, please keep silence. Please keep silence. Jai Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari Jai Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Varadhari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Varadhari Yashoda Nandana Brajajana Ranjana Yamunati Ravanachari Yamunati Ravanachari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jaya Radha Gopinath Radha Gopinath Radhe Jai Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Jaya Prabhu Pada Shri Radha Gopinath Bhagavan Ki, Shri Shri Gaur Nithai Ki, Shri Shri Gopal Ji Maharaj Ki, Shri Shri Radha Gopi Janna Vallabhati, Shri La Prabhupad Ki, Ganthraj Srimad Bhagavatam Ki, Thai Gaur Aprimanande.
नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर ये नष्टु अभद्रेशु नित्यं भागवत सेवया भगवतीर्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवति नैष्टिकी कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंदगोपकुमाराय गोविंदय नमो नम हरे कृष्णा थैंक यू फॉर कमिंग द मॉर्निंग वी आर रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम फर्स्ट कैंटो ट्वेल्थ चैप्टर द बर्थ ऑफ एम्पर परीक्षित टेक्स्ट नंबर सेवेंटीन तस्मान्नाम्ना विष्णुराता लोके भविष्य न संदेहो महाभा महाभागवत महान तस्मान्नाम्ना विष्णुराता लोके भविष्य न संदेहो महाभा महाभागवत महान तस्मान्नाम्ना विष्णुराता लोके भविष्य न संदेहो महाभा हाँ इधर ग छपाई नहीं न संदेहो महाभाग महाभागवत महान लोके भविष्य न संदेहो महाभाग महाभागवत महान तस्मा विष्णुरात लोके भविष्य भगवती तो महाभाग महाभागवत महान तस्मा विष्णुरात लोके भविष्य तेहो महाभाग महाभागवत महान translation tasmat therefore anybody wants to sing mata ji tasmat namna vishnurata 
ಹೋ ಮಹಾಭಾಗ ಮಹಾಭಾಗವತೋ ಮಹಾ ತಸ್ಮಾತ್ ದೇರ್ ಫೋರ್ ನಾಮ್ನ ಬೈ ದ ನೇಮ್ ವಿಷ್ಣುರಾತ ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ವಿಷ್ಣು ದ ಪರ್ಸ್ನಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಹೆಡ್ ಇತಿ ದಸ್ ಲೋಕೆ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಪ್ಲಾನೆಟ್ಸ್ ಭವಿಷ್ಯತಿ ಶಲ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ವೆಲ್ ನೋನ್ ನ ನೋ ಸಂದೇಹ ಡೌಟ್ಸ್ ಮಹಾಭಾಗ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಚುನೆಟ್ ಮಹಾಭಾಗವತ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಡಿವೋಟಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಮಹಾನ್ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಫೈಡ್ ಬೈ ಆಲ್ ಗುಡ್ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ರೀಸನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ವೆಲ್ ನೋನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ as one who is protected by the personality of godhead o most fortunate one there is no doubt that this child will become a first class devotee and will be qualified with all good qualities <clears throat> the lord gives protection purport the lord gives protection to all living entities because he is their supreme leader the vedic hymns confirm that the lord is the supreme personality amongst all the personalities the difference between the two living beings is that the one the personality of godhead provides for all other living beings and by knowing him one can achieve eternal peace as per katha upanishad such protection is given by his different potencies to different grades of living beings but as far as his unalloyed devotees are concerned he gives the protection personally therefore maharaj parikshit is protected from the very beginning of his appearance in the womb of his mother and because he is especially given protection by the lord the indication must be concluded that the child would be the first class first grade devotee of the lord with all good qualities there are three grades of devotees namely mahabhagavat madhyam adhikari and kanishta adhikari those who go to the temples of the lord and offer a worshipful respect to the deity without sufficient knowledge in the theological science and therefore without any respect for the devotees of the lord are called materialistic devotees or kanishta adhikari the third grade devotees secondly the devotees who have developed a mentality of genuine service to the lord and who thus make friendship only with similar devotees show favor to the neophytes and avoid the atheistic people are called as second grade devotees but those who see everything <clears throat> in the lord or everything of the lord and also see in everything an eternal relationship with the lord so that there is nothing with, within the purview of sight except the lord are called as mahabhagavatas <clears throat> or the first grade devotees of the lord such first grade devotees of the lord are perfect in all respects a devotee who may be in any of these categories is automatically qualified by all good qualities and thus a mahabhagavat devotee like maharaj parikshit is certainly perfect in all respects and because maharaj parikshit took his birth in the family of maharaj yudhishthir he is addressed here in as the mahabhagavat or the greatest of all fortunes the family in which the mahabhagavat takes his birth is fortunate because due to birth, due to the birth of a first grade devotee the members of the family past present and future up to 100 generations become liberated by the grace of the lord 
out of respect for his beloved devotee. Therefore, the highest benefit is done to one's family simply by becoming an unalloyed devotee of the Lord. Om Jnana Timiran Dhasya Jnananjana Shanakaya Chakshulun Milatam Yena Tasmai Sri Guruve Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Sva Padantikam Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Such protection is given by the Lord's different potencies to different grades of devotees. But as far as His unalloyed devotees are concerned, He gives the protection personally. It's very wonderful knowledge. Srila Prabhupada talks about uh, three categories of devotees. And that is all explained in uh, Upadesha Amruta. Prema Maitri Kripa Upeksha. The middle devotee, he has these qualities. The, the first, the lowest level which is explained is the one, um, is what is happening? You can do it later on. Why do you now? So, <clears throat> we begin our spiritual life uh, with faith in the Lord by hearing and then we go to temple and we develop faith in the Lord and the deities but it takes a time, long time to actually also start respecting devotees along with the Lord so that personality who uh, respects the Lord, worships the Lord, has faith in the Lord but doesn't respect the devotees who worship the Lord they are called Kanishta Adhikaris very baseline devotees, they don't understand the magnanimity of bhakti and the Lord also. Then, this stage is not a stagnant stage. When one continues in this stage, chants Hare Krishna, serves the devotees, performs devotional service, follows the principles of devotional service, then he develops connection with devotees. And something like friendship comes also, love comes, some interaction. There's mutual service, there's affection, bond of affection. And then we understand that the same Lord whom I worship is also there in the hearts of these wonderful people who I'm interacting with. So, Maitri. So, the Prem, the Prem of the Lord then further progresses into Maitri with the devotees. But at the same time, the devotee learns that, oh, I should not mix up with anybody else in the world because my... Uh, spiritual life which is very komal and in the beginning stage can get destroyed if I associate here also and there also the outside association is very strong and it may destroy my delicate devotional creeper so he avoids people who are non-believers or agnostics or criticizers who are criticizing bhakti or devotional service but at the same time he has been benefited by bhakti, positively in his life. Maybe little, but he has experienced that benefit. So he wants to give that benefit to everybody. So those who are sincerely seeking, coming new, he just shows kindness to them. Kripa. So Prem for the Lord, Maitri for the fellow devotees, Upeksha, that is neglecting or giving up the association of non-devotees, and Kripa, showing kindness to the new devotees. Like he was shown kindness by somebody when he was coming in as new, he wants to extend that same thing to others who are coming as new. And this is a wonderful stage, <clears throat> very balanced stage, very knowledgeable stage, where there is no confusion. Things are very clear, whom to make friendship with, 
whom to avoid, whom to show kindness, whom to love. And then, when one stays in this stays in this stage for long time, then what happens? Then not only the devotee sees Lord in the presence of fellow devotees, but he also sees the Lord in the non-devotees, so-called non-devotees. This word word non-devotee is not a very good word. We can say non-believers or non-practicing spiritualist or people who are not practicing spirituality. Because who knows, you know, the worst dacoit can become pure devotee tomorrow. <laughs> so today he is, according to us, not a devotee, a so-called non-devotee. But time, nobody knows what influence time has. So that's why it's very risky to call anybody as non-devotee. Better to call them as at present non-believers. So that personality starts seeing the Lord in uh, presence of the Lord in so-called non-believers also. And then further progress is, he sees the Lord in every atom. And then in between the two atoms also he sees the Lord. That means everywhere he sees the Lord. Everything in connection with the Lord. Not only in things, but in events also. Whatever happens, also that person sees is ordained by the Lord, controlled by the Lord, desired by the Lord for the ultimate welfare of everybody, including himself and others who is in connection with. All the relevance that he is watching in his world, in his connection, he sees that relevance with the Lord. And that makes everything perfect. Even though war is going on, or famine is going on, or heavy rains are going on, he sees perfection of the Lord in that. And that is called true knowledge. And that personality is called Uttam Adhikari or as mentioned here in his Mahabhagavat. So such Mahabhagavat are very rare people. Manushanam Sahasreshu Kaschit Yatati Siddhaye One in thousands and thousands and thousands we find such a realized soul. Because Bhakti is so rare first of all. And those who are doing Bhakti, amongst them somebody becomes realized soul. Among such realized soul, somebody loves the Lord. And among such loving people, one becomes a pure devotee of the Lord. So it is very rare. That is why it is said, if you see a devotee, a genuine devotee of the Lord, your day is fulfilled. Your sadhana of that day is fulfilled. Sarthaka, your sadhana, your devotion to the Lord of that day at least is fulfilled. Because that day you saw the devotee of the Lord. Even... Just seeing a devotee from distance also is extremely purifying, even though he is not a purest devotee of the Lord. So we do not understand, like I was chanting in the morning in the temple, and there are so many sincere devotees who are chanting, trying to connect with the Lord, seek the mercy of the Lord, you know, serve Him. They have given up so many pleasures of life and are staying in the monastery, accepting uh, simple life of austerity, just to please the Lord. It is not, it is very rare seen in the middle of the uh, materialistic atmosphere of the world. This is a very rare scene that today, at this stage of Kali Yuga, still there are so many people, hundreds in numbers, who are trying to seek the Lord, trying to give up certain things which are not favorable for that purpose. So how fortunate we should feel to be able to sit among such devotees and to chant the holy name of the Lord. This is also the result of lot of pious activities in the past. And we should thank the Lord that our pious activities have been given results in this particular manner. That we have been given company of loving devotees who are sincere, who love us, whom we love. It is not ordinary for a devotee to love you and for you to feel love for fellow devotees. Because generally we feel love for our wife and our children and our money and our relatives and property and these. These are the usual attachments that we have. But in the middle of all these attachments, to have attachments to sincere devotees and you love them and they love you is something which is very extraordinary. That is why our life is very blessed. Because we are covered by devotees. And this... Prema and Maitri, 
is not simply uh, for the sake of being. The, re the real power of this Prem and Maitri comes into action when you go through difficulties in life. Then you come to know how valuable is your love for the Lord, how valuable is your friendship with the Lord. Because all that you have invested in this friendship of the devotees and for loving the Lord comes to you in return when you need, the, need, need it the most. That is why Bhakti, uh, when we begin, we may not ex uh, expect or experience great things in life. Wow, it doesn't happen. But when you pursue Bhakti with patience and understanding, and something happens in your life unexpectedly, then you see, wow, look at this. I did little bit service to Krishna, and Krishna is reciprocating so nicely. So that is why, uh, it is a great mercy of the Lord to be in the company of devotees. It is, it is said that the real gift of the Lord is connection with the devotees. Otherwise, we are connected to many people in the world, in business, family, you know, neighborhood and country and community and so many people are there. But nobody really is yours. They don't come to you when you need them the most. In fact, in fact they ditch you when you need them the most. That is the worldly situation. And the devotees may not be in your life all the time sticking you and hugging you and embracing you. But when you need them the most, they are right there. And that is the real wealth of life. Such relationship with devotees is the real wealth of our life. Which cannot be counted into any uh, materialistic currency or unit of land or property that we have. So Prabhupada is saying that such a devotee when he is born in such a in a one family, out of love and respect for that devotee, the Lord relates hundred generations of that devotee. Very nicely, Prabhupada mentions over here that <clears throat> the family in which Mahabhagavat takes birth is fortunate because due to the birth of this first great devotee, the members of the family, past, present, and future up to 100 generations become liberated by the grace of the Lord out of respect for his beloved devotee. So how important it is to become devotee? How important it is to perform our sadhana and saiva in such a way that first we become dear to devotees and eventually we become dear to the Lord. Because what that can offer us one can never imagine. What is the meaning of liberation? We all are suffering here. We are all embodied souls, Dehadhari. And we are going through one after another, one after another, one after another sufferings in life. Unpredictably, unknowingly, unexpectedly. And we all want to get relief. But we are bound by our karma. Our karma is, you know, controlling us. And pushing us from one to another suffering. But in those suffering situations, when devotees come in picture, we are relieved. Because devotees come in picture by the mercy of the Lord. The Lord is actually pushing devotees to help you and me and us. So, this is the chapter of uh, Parikshit Charitra. The life story of the great devotee Parikshit Maharaj. Now, there are so many verses before and after. Essentially, they are telling us that Parikshit Maharaj had qualities of all the five Pandavas together and many, many more Vaishnavas. He was like this, of like, like this person. His quality was like this person. You go, Shukdev Goswami is, uh, is explaining in detail. But you can understand one thing. Although somebody is endowed with unlimited greatest qualities of all the greatest personalities, but miseries keep striking that personality also. Regularly, unexpectedly, when you don't predict or expect, that time it happens. So if you study the life of Parikshit, why, why it is given in Srimad Bhagavatam? 
because every moment of his life is so inspiring so enlivening so much hope giving we think that we we only suffer difficulties we only have miseries we only have you know challenges and uh, so many things happening in our life but others know what we are going through but in uh, marathi abhanga it is one saying is there jaya angi mothe pana taya yathana kathina the higher and bigger you become the greater, greater you become the miseries are on increasing your your quota of misery is is, big, is bigger because you are a bigger personality in all sense so that's why what miseries pandavas went through are unparalleled we cannot imagine none of us are uh, nobody attempted to burn us alive i don't think uh, in recent history anybody has gone through a situation where his wife was tried to be stripped in public we have not gone through that kind of situations none of our children are fed poison when they are playing in the garden these are horrible things if one is enough the one if happens in one's life whole life one be one will be crying out on that so much misery intense suffering is going to be there the damage that is caused by such misery at the level of the heart is irreparable even the person will die people will keep remembering the suffering that the person had and pandavas didn't have one they had so many one after another kunti devi is enlisting them in front of krishna so what is happening in parikshit's life king parikshit's life the very time he was conceived his father was just young boy just married and he was sent to the war and she was pregnant uttara was pregnant is uttara right Prashish's mother, Uttara was pregnant, and then suddenly the young husband, at 16 years of age, dies. So the young girl, she was a young girl only, having pregnancy, and the baby is in the womb. Now uh, Abhimanyu is uh, Arjuna's son, and there are five more sons of Pandavas. Each one has one. They also died in the warfare. Imagine. So there is there is nobody. There is no second level. So only third level is there, and then all the massacre happens, and everybody is burnt in fire by Ashwatthama in the middle of the night, and chopped up by the sword and arrows, and then everybody is finished. Only five Pandavas are remaining, and suddenly the Brahmastra comes. Imagine you are just undergoing one misery, trying to reconcile with the fact, trying to understand. what is the meaning behind it in my life and why it is happening and suddenly brahmastra comes and that too specifically towards the baby in the womb just try to imagine you and me are uttara what would be our condition for completely miserable condition but what a devotee does in such disaster is more important than the disaster miseries happen everywhere but when the devotees react in a particular way that becomes history that becomes shastra for the future so what we need to focus is what the devotees did when the miseries came so what did she do she didn't call oh yudhishthir maharaj oh my great father in law oh bhim sen oh the great warrior arjuna Oh Nakul Sahadev, please come and help me. She called for Krishna, which is very significant. Not that these five great souls, which I just named, were not powerful enough. They were powerful, and they were powerful devotees also together. They had both material and spiritual power. But the understanding that Uttara Mata Ji has is that there is only one shelter. You may have so many other. shelters which are called as corridor shelters or supportive shelters but there is only one shelter there is sri krishna that she knew her activity proves that in the most difficult conditions of life she took that shelter that means she has that realization she is not not a theoretical devotee she proved by her action that she knows the philosophy 
and she has realized the philosophy and she knows whom to take shelter and who can actually save. Rest all well-wishers are also consumed by the power of time. Please understand. It's not that we don't have well-wishers. We have many well-wishers who really help us in life. But the ultimate well-wisher who is all-powerful, all-capable is the Supreme Lord. Under whose guidance and inspiration other well-wishers come and help us on behalf of Him. So she took shelter of Krishna. And see how Sri Krishna is. When someone takes shelter of Krishna, he is like completely controlled by that devotee who takes his shelter. And he ran to serve her, to help her. Externally also Ashwatthama has released one Brahmastra. It's not that there was one Brahmastra which he has released externally. And Arjuna also released counter Brahmastra. And there was some tussle going on there in the space, which also had to be controlled. Another Brahmastra was thrown to specifically to the womb, to the child in the womb of Uttara Devi. So Krishna was managing both. But this particular management was very sukshma. Hardly anybody knew. By the mercy of Sukhdev, we know. By the mercy of Vyasadev, we know. Because they are Trikala Darshi. They could see everything afterwards. Krishna entered in the womb, assumed a form which is only a thumb size, with full-blown opulence. And he moved his Kamudiki Gada in such a way that he destroyed. It is explained that Maharaj Parishad actually died in the womb. But Krishna revived him. First, he destroyed the influence of Brahmastra. There was tremendous light in the inside the womb, which is generally dark. And Parishad was revived and he saw the Lord moving his club gloriously, amazingly. So, it was a great disaster in the womb. You have already seen the death, faced the death. But at the same time, there is so much of joyful situation of having darshan of the Lord inside the womb, in the most unbelievable form and way. The procedure was so unbelievable. Unexpected, unheard before also. But the what Lord cannot do. That means, here, the most miserable condition for Uttara and for Parikshit Maharaj was turned into most blissful situation by the mercy of the Lord. Is this not true? Uttara is also about to, you know, face the greatest misery of losing a child in the womb. Child is going to face death and face death also. But it was turned into a blissful situation. That is the version of the Lord. So, over and over again in scriptures, we come across this theme. All the worst things in the life of those who love God are turned into happiness. All the worst things are turned towards the welfare of the devotees, welfare of the person who love God. I don't know whether I am quoting it perfectly. All the worst things in the lives of people are turned to good for those who are loving the Lord. That means, if we love the Lord truly and genuinely, selflessly, then in our life also, the worst so-called situations by definition will be turned into blessings, will be turned into blissful situations. And in classes and seminars and in uh, conferences, it is very good to hear this and wow, it's a wow effect, you know, when you hear this, wow, what a statement. But Millions of times more wow feeling is there when you actually go through it in life. Now this is beginning and there are many things in between. But in the end, again, whether you are a king or a pauper, whether you are a beggar or a multimillionaire, miseries can strike you any moment in life. As long as we are in, in the material world, this is guaranteed that miseries can strike us any moment of time. Now he is a king, he has everything at his disposal. He is going for hunting and he is supposed to return home and suddenly he becomes thirsty. Generally he is fully controlled. He doesn't have hunger, thirst disturbing him. No other vega or jeska disturbing him. He is a very wonderful personality. By efforts, by his sadhana, by his persona, he is, he is like that. And suddenly by the will of the Lord he becomes totally controlled by 
thirst, you know, maddened by thirst. To the extent he insults the sadhu also, who is in meditation, but he feels he's not responding to me. What does he think of himself? I am Chakravarti Samrat, the Lord of the universe, King of the universe. And he's not even resp uh, responding to my request of water. He must be punished. So he insults him by putting a dead snake. This is all unexpected. You don't even know that I will be out of control of thirst. And suddenly, when he is well situated, well placed, everything is going on well, suddenly he gets a curse from a small Brahmin boy, Shringi, the son of the Shamika Rishi. That personality who has insulted my father will die in seven days by a snake bite. Finished. All your peace, happiness, so-called well-being, going well, everything is finished. Again, what has happened as a worst thing in his life is not important. How did he react is very important. That needs to be studied. Because what has actually happened is not a surprise. Because that those things keep happening in the material world. In the most unexpected way. He could have thought, oh, seven days only. So much big kingdom. So much of opulence, so many wives, so much of gold, so much of food, so many places to visit. Let me make a compact plan for 24 by 7, huh? 24 into 7, <laughs> 168 hours. Let me enjoy everything. Nobody would have blamed him because he had lived life of virtue and people would have thought he deserves it. He should actually go through it because he has been serving us so nicely in the kingdom. So no Praja would have cursed him also. But lo and behold, what he has done, instantly he gave up everything. That shows that he was detached from all those things before also. See, nobody can just give up everything instantly. Huh? By the way, people understand. Even the biggest of renunciations also, they cannot give up what things they have all of a sudden. It's only a person who is deep into spirituality, deep in devotion and love with the Lord can do that. And his action proved. When Pandavas came to know that Krishna has left the world, they also dropped it instantly. That proved that they were not attached to all those things which they dropped. Otherwise, they couldn't have dropped it. They were attached to Krishna. That is why they were there as kings of the world. So, Parishad Maharaj dropped immediately. He removed all Raja Vastra, Raja Alankar, Raja Mukuta, Royal Insignia, everything he just dropped. And imagine, only on Kopin he walked out of the house. It is very easy to read all these things in scriptures and say, wah, wah. Very difficult to do. If you have lived very opulently, it is very difficult to give the opulence. The conditioning is so strong. But one who is at the level of the heart attached to the Lord, he is in principle not attached to anything around him. That is why he can just give it up and walk off. There is no, no question of developing detachment. That is all artificial because if somebody like you know people in Himalayas, they work hard and to do the pasya to give up certain things. But it is very temporary. Because when you try to give up certain things, that's not our nature. Our nature is to love something. That's our nature. An Ananda Mayo Bhyasat. Vairagya is not our nature. Please understand. Vairagya is we accept Vairagya effortfully. But that is temporary. And if we want to make our Vairagya permanently, it has to be coupled up with attachment to Krishna. There is no question of separate detachment from material world. What we need to learn is that we need to develop positive, loving attachment to the Lord and His devotees. Then you won't even know how wonderfully the Vairagya has come in you. And you will have no difficulty in giving up things when you need to give them up. And that is what is Parikshit. What we understand from his personality, why he could give up everything instantly because he was actually in deep love with the Lord. And we have to draw inspiration from that. We are no way in comparison with Parikshit Maharaj. What he gave up is impossible to even imagine. We have to give up our few thousands and lakhs and few clothes and few 
you know, 100,000, I mean, 1,000 square feet property that we have if we live in. <laughs> A few things here and there are petty things actually. But even so difficult to give up. Even the food habits that we have, we are eating something at home and we go somewhere in the Yatra and we find so difficult to manage with seven, eight days of that food. We want to reach back home fast to eat the things which we are attached to at home or in the temple or in the ashram. Huh? So difficult. What to speak of giving up a kingdom? What to speak of giving up the position of a king of respect, awe and reverence and control that you have in all four directions in the universe? And not in small area of colony. You're not a chairman of society. <laughs> All the world is under you. And to give up like this, it requires deep spirituality and love. And that Parishat Maharaj had. And further what he did is more important than what he did currently by giving up. He chose to sit at the lotus feet of a pure devotee to hear about the Lord. All of us know that NHC Aushadi Nasho Baro Lagi. We have chanted that verse in so many times in the lectures and we have heard it. The topmost medicine for all the miseries of life is the holy name of the Lord and pure devotional service is a solution actually. Krishna Katha is a solution to all the miseries of life. But how many of us take shelter of Krishna Katha when we are actually in misery life, of life? When misery comes, then we try to solve the misery on the misery level. Like if the cancer comes and we try to consult with many big doctors in Mumbai and Delhi and try to see what is the best treatment available in alternative, in allopathy, in this and that. Is there any Baba available who can give water to you and you know, cure you? There's so many things we try. But how many times when the misery strikes, we immediately run to hearing or reading Srimad Bhagavatam and Krishna Rila? Right? I can tell you, that it is a fact in the most miserable condition emotionally for us when we have a greatest of loss when we hear krishna katha from a pure devotee it not only relieves you of misery but it creates bliss in your life in the worst miserable condition it's a fact it is not a theory recently when we underwent crisis some Brijbas is called on the phone and actually they are so wonderful people. They started narrating Krishna's pastimes and in the middle of the so-called miserable situation, those pastimes told by sincere loving devotees of the Lord were not only mitigating miseries but creating bliss in the middle of miseries. And I was surprised how I can be blissful. Is it, is it wrong to be blissful in this time? No, it is not, not like that. The power of Krishna Leela and the power of Krishna Leela being told by a pure devotee, sincere devotee who loves you is so much that it will put you in bliss. I remember I had gone to Kurukshetra one time with His Holiness Radhana Swami Maharaj. And in that family, four deaths had taken place because of one accident. And four people were multi-fractured, discharged from hospital and at home on the bed. That means there's a one room in the big hall in the room house is a ward. Somebody's leg is hanging like this, somebody's you know, hand is hanging like this, IV lines going on at home only. And four people are already dead. And I was accompanying. And I was wondering, how, was, how is Maharaj going to console them? What is the modus operandi? What is he going to do now? I want to watch. I was watching very closely. First thing, Maharaj started Kirtan. And I could see the people who were, those who are also having accident, multiple fractures, they are also in sorrow because they have lost their dear ones. It's not that they are not injury. They are in physical pain and emotional pain also, and family pain also. And those who didn't have the accident, they are also in deep pain to see the injured people and the memory of the lost ones. So it's like a complicated, miserable situation. So instead of speaking many words, Maharaj just sat down and started doing Kirtan. And he narrated some wonderful pastimes of the Lord. Believe me, I could see the transition from misery to neutrality to bliss. 
it's like i could see that somebody is pulling people from the uh, no uh, dirt of misery lifting them up bathing them and putting them in blissful situation pulling them from that one man after another one after another and i could feel that faith in radhana swami maharaj that the holy name and the katha of the lord can pull you out of any miserable situation they were all smiling and laughing and singing blissfully the holy name of the lord and we spent like 3 days there and the whole gloomy atmosphere was turned into bliss and so many more examples i can give you but the initial action is important you can go on giving consolation oh so bad happened oh shouldn't have happened why should it happen to you i don't know why the lord is doing like this to you but you know bear with it time will heal you this is an actually help because the baseline reality remains that you have the pain of the people whom you have lost same thing happened in parikshit maharaj he was so determined there was no confusion in his mind he straight went to the bank of ganga and i interestingly i came across one story that uddhava had earlier met parikshit maharaj this story is very interesting ha huh? and parikshit maharaj always told always thought and he in that conversation he told uddhava that you know i want to just give up everything and sit at the bank of ganga and listen to krishna katha like even shivaji maharaj also had gone to tukaram maharaj of late we went to pandarpur we again remembered the katha bas i want to just give up everything and just understand what is paramatma something like that so uddhava said your desire will be fulfilled soon just wait and watch how the lord will bless you so when this happened he remembered uddhava's statement and straight he went to the bank of ganga but now he has all reasons so only 7 days in life otherwise people say are very going you have so much duties to the world how can you just walk off like that wearing copin but now everything is justified so he went to the bank of ganga and sure enough as per the word of uddhav who is also a pure devotee of the lord shukdev ji came there you know getting the curse for a person like parishit maharaj was such an important event in the world people sadhus rishis munis who were doing their tapasya in the caves in seclusion in solitude their dhyan broke by this very event that means they were not hearing the curse given by shringi but the subtlety of that curse disturbed their meditation woke them up from meditation and all of them gave up their meditation and came down to the place where at the bank of ganga all these things going to happen and who all were they agasti muni you can name them parvat muni narad muni vyasa muni everybody was there all people who whom you name who were there in the world existing doing their tapasya and devotion to the lord all of them gathered such a gala event it was king parikshit is being cursed not a ordinary personality and then he sat down and he asked only one relevant question he didn't say why this has to happen to me did i do anything sinful in my life that i had to do this mistake i didn't mean it why should i be cursed that to buy a foolish brahmanical boy by misusing his brahmanical power he could have asked so many questions which are valid questions but point to note he didn't ask a single question like that he only asked what is the duty of a person who is about to die not even he said in 7 days or in 15 days or in one day <laughs> that question shows his equipoised condition his composure his balance that is not disturbed by the curse he has accepted although he has not understood the mystery of the curse why it was given to him he has accepted it as a blessing of the lord how we can convert misery into bliss is by accepting things as they are that's all without questioning without doubting and usually our nature is to question and doubt 
why me only why this to me only why this magnanimity i mean magnitude what wrong i have done i'm angry i'm frustrated i don't know why i've lost all the composure and strength but moment you say yes sir yes my lord i accept it tremendous spiritual strength and power enters in you which makes it easy to handle everything what is up around you and that is why we need devotees because devotees and their association and service to devotees actually help us to come to this stage of composure okay we we eat together we embrace one another we know we really love one another but all that is culminated into that mercy that that relationship that we have of love amongst each other culminates into love from the lord in the form of mercy to face the situation in a very positive grateful way that is why we have to take what is happening now very seriously that the association that we have we may not like somebody we may like somebody we have we may have some difference of opinion with somebody there so many things happen when we live together but we should not focus on those things but we should focus on the mercy that we are getting by the company of such devotees and the given set of devotees is a perfect arrangement of the lord you should not think oh um, no vrindavan is the best situation do devotees are very good there belgaon devotees are very good mayapur devotees are very good here devotees are not good and those devotees may think radha gopinath devotees are very good i don't have that kind of company in mayapur <laughs> somebody may say like that but the set of devotee and the set of company of devotees that we have been blessed blessed up blessed with is the best that you need it's a tailor made situation so shamik rishi being insulted a boy getting cursing parikshit maharaj is all a perfect situation no way to be question why we must to only accept and because he accepted as it is the great thing happened which not only delivered him but delivering everybody today also <clears throat> shrimad bhagavatam the power of that conversation which resulted by the grateful acceptance by parikshit maharaj was such that the curse given by that boy remained a formality it was rendered to a insignificant useless thing because it had to come takshak had to come he came and bit the dead body but the power of the conversation the adan pradan or the samagam or the satsang between shukadev and parishit maharaj was so so great that parishit maharaj by the power of his perfection of shravanam left his body much before the snake bird came so there was not even a, having what everybody was worried oh snake bird will come and bite him and will separate his soul from his body so much pain it will cause him but so blissfully he passed away and the snake bird had to come that's why at the end of the seventh day the snake bird came bit him and did his formality so imagine when we when we become devotee of the lord prabhu ji said today what is the subject last time it was festivity yes the festivity continues actually when we learn to accept things as they are gratefully and gracefully the festivity in life continues you don't need to have a mishap in life it will remain a festivity all throughout your life whether you are going through a misery or not going through a misery or going through a normal routine life the festivity continues was festivity is in service and worship of the lord and in relation with the devotees that is our festivity we have been given a life of continuous festivity provided we log into it with proper password of grace and gratitude and it is all reality please understand is not theory we all can experience it gratitude is that weapon with which everything is turned upside down all our life is actually result of our past karmas right and it is supposed to only have sufferings because the manufacturer has only told there is only misery in this life so how can it be turned into festivities and blissfulness 
Okay, this is the formula. Parashit didn't have any complaint or any grudge. He was only grateful. And see, nobody talks about today the misery that he had because of the curse. Everyone talks about today of Srimad Bhagavatam and how he delivered him. So by one devotee accepting things as they are, his miseries turned into a, a celebration or a festivity for everybody else in the world, for all time to come. Because once a great acceptance of reality is done, it becomes sufficient substrate of bliss for all time to come in future. And this is our fortune. <clears throat> so, all the worst things turned out to be good for those who love God. This is the right, right word, I remember it now. All the worst things turn out to be good for those who love God. So that love God is in our hands. And how do we love God? By loving His devotees. Genuine loving His devotees. I will tell you one story. How when we are loved by devotees, how Lord loves us. Huh? This story is in Chaitanya Charitamrita. We all know Shivananda Sen used to always, you know, sponsor and manage and organize and take all the troubles to physically execute the yatras for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And uh, he was a very rich man, but uh, he, was, he had that heart of actually going down to the ground level and helping devotees and actually spending money also for them. At times, there used to be many kingdoms, you know, samsthaniks, local kingdom in India. So there was border and there were, there were taxes and every time when boats would pass through, the tax collector would come and, and he'll hold Shivananda Sen and he will say, okay, okay, everybody should go, I will manage the tax pay payments. So he would get delayed and people would go ahead. So like that, in one of the trips, one just dog just came in, in the boat and he accompanied everywhere. So everywhere, even his tax was paid and he never left the devotees. And in the course of time, the dog became very dear to Shivananda Sen. Nothing that dog had done greatly, but somehow Shivananda, you know, Mahabhagavat that he was, even the non-human beings also, he felt that love. Oh, somehow this soul in the form of a, in the body of a dog is somehow coming with the devotees everywhere. He's not leaving the company of devotees. Isn't that amazing? Even in my yatra one time, 10 years back, I went to Mayapur. One dog attended yatra of all the days. Can you believe this? He was there till the last announcement and he would take prasad and one day would go by bus, another day would go by boat. He would be there, right there. When the day was going by bus, he would come at the bus and peacefully wait till devotees climb and then he would climb and sit inside on the parapet. And the day would go by boat, he would come at the boat and peacefully at the end get in the boat and whatever devotee will give, he will eat, not make one barking noise attend the full class, eat the full prasad, get back in the boat with devotees and come back. So I'm sure if this is happening in off late, it must be happening definitely. But Shivananda Sen got very attached to the dog. So whenever he get delayed, he would tell others, look after this dog very well. See that you feed him rice and he should be comfortable. So other devotees who are assistant managers of the yatra, they would take care of the dog nicely, you know. And one day, similar delay took place because of whatever tax payment. And Shivananda came, came late. It was a little late night. And every time he would come late night, he would ask, where is the dog? Has he eaten? Is he all right? They would say, yes, yes. He is there. He ate. So he is fine. Then he will take and he will sleep, sleep. That day, he came and asked, where is the dog? The caretaker said, I don't know. And Shivananda said, got alarmed. What do you mean? I had given a responsibility to you to take care of my dog. Where is he? Did you feed him rice? No, I don't even see him. How would I fed rice to him? I don't know. He, where is he? So, there is no rice also I fed him. So, Shivananda got very disturbed. He said, I will not eat a morsel of rice till we find his dog. And till he eats rice, I will not eat rice. And believe me, master is angry. So, all his servants, they got out in the middle of the night to search for the dog. Whole night they searched. But they did not find the dog. And Shivananda Sen did not eat one morsel, neither he slept in the night. 
Next morning, as usual, devotees went to meet Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took them to temple of Jagannath. They did ecstatic kirtan there. Shivananda Sen is upset because dog is not there. Everybody had ecstatic time. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu brought them back to his accommodation and he served prasadam to everybody. Everybody had prasad and still there is no dog. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and then uh, Shivananda Sen went to meet Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And lo and behold, what he sees, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is eating coconut water and pulp, eating the pulp little bit. And there was a dog and Mahaprabhu Chaitanya was feeding that dog and he was eating the pulp very peacefully, very humbly, sitting there and accepting the remnants directly from the hands and mouth of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Shivananda said, we searched him for so much time, so many hours in the whole night and we could not see. And here he is eating the remnants of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Shivananda Sen offered Dandavat Pranams with stretched hands to the feet of the dog. <laughs> Offered Sashtang Dandavat Pranam. And Mahaprabhu Chaitanya kept feeding, kept feeding and kept feeding. And after feeding nicely, in front of the eyes of Shivananda Sen, the dog was sent back home, back to Godhead. Gauranga Mahaprabhu ki! Why did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu do that? Because the dog had become dear to his dear devotee, Shivananda Sen. Because Shivananda Sen was so dear to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And because Shivananda Sen loved that dog as his dear most, the Lord said, the dog also is dear most to me. So first he fed Mahaprasad and he sent the dog back to Godhead. Imagine, this is the power of becoming dear to a devotee. So first is, we should serve the devotee. So maybe we serve the devotee but don't bother about whether the devotee is happy or not. We just, I did my seva. It's up to you to become happy or not. <laughs> One level. Second level, I serve. And I also make sure that you are happy with my service. You are pleased because pleasing is the purpose of service. Right? And third thing is, I keep serving you so many times, pleasing you, that you start loving me. You really love me. Or I have obliged you by my service in such a way that you start really liking and loving me. Like Lord Ramchandra had two books. One book was very big, of millions of names who would remember him every day. But Hanuman's name was not there in that. So the devotees who went to ask that notebook were wondering, wondering where is Hanuman? Hanuman's name is not there only. He took out a small notebook <laughs> where there are few names whom the Lord would remember every day. <laughs> and Hanuman's name was there in that. <laughs> like Akabushundi's name was in that, like that. So, the Lord loves that person whom the devotee loves because the Lord loves the devotee. So this is what we have to understand. Once we make sure in this life there are, there are many devotees whom I have served so nicely and they are pleased and they love me, we are safe. Because then the Lord will definitely love you. Although we are not so qualified to, to be loved by the Lord. Because why the Lord has given us devotees in first place? So that we talk about big, big thing, na? Prema Pumartho Mahan, love of Godhead is the purpose of life. We have come here to love the Lord. Some Siddhi Haritoshanam. How do we practice that? Lord is far from us still. We see His Vigraha, we decorate and we love and see, everything is fine. But still, Lord is still far from realization in our heart. But devotees are right there, moving in, in, in front of ours. So if we practice that love, with the devotees, Lord gets convinced that they will love me because they are loving my beloveds. Right? Very simple. So it's a practical, practical um, uh, facility Lord has given us. If we cannot love the fellow devotees around us, there's no question of loving the Lord. How will Lord be convinced? I gave you a few, my, few of my beloveds and you can't love them. What are you talking about loving me? Impossible. So, however, so-called insignificant the devotees may be who are around us from our, you know, intellectual understanding. But if they love you and if you learn to love them, then the Lord gets convinced that I love you and you love him. And that is our hope of life. We have to ponder on that. At the end of the day, 
whenever there would be devotee conflicts, you know. Even today, we also adopt that measure. The two devotees are conflicting. And whatever you counsel, you do counseling sessions and all, they don't accept only. And one final Brahmastra question you ask. Tell me, if you are on deathbed and he is around, what he will do? Yes, he will chant Hare Krishna in my ears. And there are so many relatives whom you love, whom you like, and they are around you. What they will do? They will simply cry. And this person hates me, I fight with him. But if he happens to be around me at my deathbed, he will chant the name of the Lord, irrespective of my relationship with him. And that is the reality. The ultimate welfare, only a, a so-called inimical devotee can do. And so-called loving relative cannot do. Please understand. That is why we need to love devotees. However much we have conflicts and um, what do you call lack of opinion together. What do you say? Difference of opinion, hoga. Still, finally, the devotees are nirpeksh. They don't carry these grudges at the deathbeds or to crematoriums or after death. We forget everything. When somebody is seen in the need, worst, worst situation in life, the devotee's heart will pour, although there is previous enmity or difference of opinion. That is why the devotees are precious. And we need to develop love for them. So finally, con uh, you know, re uh, what do you call, reconciling or saransh of this whole story is, how does one react to a calamity of life? Is what decides destiny of our life. Things can be totally changed from this direction to that direction. If we learn how to react to a particular misery of life. And Lord will help us if we are determined to respond favorably and gracefully and gratefully. If we are deciding it today, then tomorrow when the misery comes, Lord will perfectly place you in a situation where you can actually experience how miseries can be turned into bliss in your and my life. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Is there any question? Any comments? Thank you very much for patiently attending. Hare Krishna. Vancha Kalpata Rubyasya, Kripa Sindhu Bhya Evacha, Patitanam Pavanebhyo, Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha.